It really cuts to the heart of what we're doing here. Everybody has a right to live. Everybody has a right to live. Everybody has a right to live. And before this campaign fails, we'll all go down to jail. Everybody has a right to live. Everybody has a right to live. We're gathering together as a moral witness to say poverty is immoral. Poverty is immoral. Systemic racism is immoral. Ecological destruction is immoral. The war economy is immoral. I've got a chain 
trainer here, Roger. Roger's gonna come up with me. One of our chants is that we're working together. Fusion solidarity. So we're gonna say forward together. You say one step back. Ready, Roger? Step back. Forward together! Today, in this call for a moral revival, in this call of the Poor People's Campaign, we're looking back. We're looking back at what's done 50 years ago. We're also, though, here together in the present and looking forward to what we are going to do to change the moral narrative of our nation. Our first speaker is the Bishop of Vermont, my boss, Thomas Ely. Please give it up for Bishop Tom. Thank you, Earl. How's the parish going? He's good. So, as a person of, of faith and as Bishop of the Episcopal Church in Vermont, I stand here today to lend my voice and commitment to the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival and its expression right here in Vermont. Somebody is hurting our people. And we respond, everybody has the right to live, to love, to food, to health, to learn. I'm grateful for the leadership of Father Cooper Camp and Mark Hughes who's standing down there. We gotta give a big shout out to Mark and he'll talk later. I'm grateful for all the leadership that they've provided and that others have provided in this effort for they have brought us to this moment in time when we declare in Mark's words, policies that promote systemic racism, poverty, the war economy, and environmental destruction are threatening our democracy and decaying our national morality. Right. And we're tired of that and don't want to see it continue. That's right. That's right. I'm fully aligned with this effort to raise awareness and take concrete action to do all we can to undo the systemic issues that contribute to poverty, inequality, racism, and injustice in our nation and here in Vermont. My witness as a person of faith is grounded in the conviction that we have a moral imperative to honor and promote the dignity of every human being. I believe we also have a moral imperative to uphold the fundamental human rights of people of all races, especially those disproportionately impacted by poverty and other forms of systemic injustice and poverty that poverty facilitates. I have here in mind inequality in our legal justice system, especially the disproportionate number of people who are poor who are incarcerated in this country. That's right. I have in mind here wage inequality and the tendency to blame poor people for the po their poverty rather than confront the reality that many people who work a full-time job and sometimes more than one just are not able to meet their basic human needs given their wage. That's right, hey, hey, hey. I'm here mindful in mind of racial inequality, a persistent narrative that poverty is a problem, a, a problem about immigrants or people of color, or caused by immigrants or people of color, rather than a common reality that crosses all races and ethnicities. All right. All right. So as someone from the church, the word revival has a special meaning That's to me. Right. That's right. But when I think of revival, it suggests that something has flatlined yeah. and needs to be shocked back into life. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've heard for too long that if we just vote a certain way or wait long enough, things will change for the better. Have they? No. All the while we watch the status quo gain steam as morality slowly dies on, at the expense of the vulnerability of those in our society who are least able Preach to respond. Jay. It doesn't work that way yes. in the kingdom of God. Oh, it right. doesn't That's work right. that way oh. in the reign of God. Today, in the spirit of Dr. King and others who called us to this work 50 years ago, we stand together to challenge that narrative. 
and we bring with us the energy that's needed to give life to humanity, justice, and the dignity of every human being, indeed all of creation. And so going forward from here, each of us needs to make a commitment. Each of us is challenged to make an effort to understand the truth about poverty. Make a commitment that would allow your heart to change forever. Yes. Break yes. your silence yes. and speak out. Yes. Live out against yes. systemic racism, poverty, ecological devastation, the war economy, and the distorted moral narrative. Right. Place your body and your life on the line as some will today and every day, willing to lose everything to save the heart and the soul of this nation. Yes. Get involved in the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, because everybody has the right to live. Everybody yes. has the right to love. Yes. Everybody has the right to yes. earn the food right. to help. Yes. Be All part right. of the effort. Thank All you. Right. Everybody has a right to live. Everybody has a right to love. Everybody has a right to health. All right. We're making history today. Do you feel historic? Never before in the history of the world have we been in 37 state capitals making a people's call for a moral revival. That's what the Poor People's Campaign is all about, making history today. And then we're coming back next week. This is 40 days of action. 40 days of action gathering together across this nation looking at what the war economy has done to devastate the lives of the poor in our country, looking at how the lives of women and children and disabled are further and further reduced, even crushed by poverty. We're coming together to speak out one people, one voice. Our next speaker is uh, Richard, uh, come on Richard, Richard Zaplasinski, he's uh, uh, the president of Veterans for Peace, he's speaking here on his own behalf though, so please welcome my brother Richard. I have a few lines to share with you. Um, I wrote these lines as I was preparing a message to present to the Vermont <clears throat> Peace Conference in Burlington last Saturday called Building a World Without War. <clears throat> the message brings attention to the distorted 2019 U.S. budget. These numbers tell the story, and this shows the proportion here on this panel. For defense and war, 686 billion is <clears throat> up 13 percent from, from 2017. For Veterans Affairs here, which takes care of the wounded, the human cost of war, can you hear me already? Right? Talk loud. The human cost of war, 76 billion, up 12% from 2017. This blue portion here is the Department of State, in other words, diplomacy and peace. 26 billion and down 26%. For restoration of in the environment and communities, the solid line at the end is zero. zero. Nothing. Zero. Zero. This display shows the numbers graphically. <clears throat> Here's what I wrote. I call it war and peace. <clears throat> the world can no longer afford war. The costs are too great. Veterans killed, veterans wounded, civilians killed civilians wounded, communities destroyed, land, forests, water, air polluted and destroyed, little or no money to care for the wounded, no money to be rebuild destroyed communities, no money to restore land, forests, air, and water. War makes us all, every one of us, poor people. There's no alternative. We must foster peace every day, in every way. Learn to be at peace in yourself, foster peace in your family, in your community, in the nation, and in the world. Thank you. All right, thank you, Richard. This war economy is killing us. This war economy is killing us. And so what we're gonna say, and I'm gonna get my uh, brother Roger up as channeling again, 
If we can't have it, shut it down. Okay, you ready? If, if we, we can't have, have it, it, shut it down. down. If we can't have it, shut it down. If we can't have it, shut it down. If we can't have it, shut it down. If we can't can have it, shut it down. All right. All right. So we're talking about history. We began this campaign actually yesterday. What was yesterday? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mother's Day was started over 150 years ago by Julia Ward Howe. It was in response to the devastation of the military economy then, the devastation of the Civil War. The original Mother's Day proclamation called for a day of peace. We began this day of peace in our nonviolent moral fusion direct action. We know that mothers know the cost of a war economy. Mothers know the cost of ecological destruction on their children. Mothers know the cost of systemic racism. And mothers know the cost of poverty. Our next speaker is Amanda Shepard from Middlebury in the Vermont Worker Center. So come on up, please, Amanda. Give her a welcome. This is really beautiful, really beautiful to everybody here, to see everyone here. It's also really sad. And there's a lot of tears out there. My name is Amanda Shepard. I'm from Addison County. I'm a home care provider, and I'm a mother. I have worked around Addison County and worked around the state of Vermont and worked with thousands of home care providers and their clients, and I have seen the needs around the state of Vermont. It's time to break the silence about America's war on the poor. Tens of millions of people like me are in poverty today, and it didn't happen by accident. It's not because I'm too lazy nope. or not willing to work. It's because of the choices made by politicians. Choices like blocking living wages, health care, and public assistance. You can see the war on the poor all around us. Parents who work full-time jobs just to make ends meet, and it still doesn't meet their fundamental needs. That's right. Wages are so low, work workers have to fight for the right to stand together. Mm -hmm. And because politicians are gutting unions, millions of people today can't even afford water. Mm -hmm. That's right. We live in a society that spends 53 cents of every federal discretionary dollar on a military and only 15 cents on anti-poverty programs. Uh. What is wrong with this I myself have worked multiple jobs and struggled to keep housing and to keep food for my children. Struggled to have access to the education and maintain a living. And what's happening to our communities is a crime. It's a crime, it's a crime. to have this violence against the poor. Yeah. It's a crime that our children, one out of every two children, is living in poverty. That's right. That's right. That's right. Immoral. Yep. We are a non-violent movement. That's right. That's right. We're yep. bringing attention to the various forms of violence against poor and working families. That's right. Every choice is a moral choice. Yes. Especially Everyone. when it deals with the poor people, children, and health care. And we so need a moral revival in this country. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. When there is an emergency, an ambulance doesn't need to stop for the red lights. No. That's right. Dr. King once said that this country needs ambulance drivers who will ignore the red lights yes. of the system. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. I am ready to break the silence. I am ready to be an ambulance driver that yeah. will ignore yeah. the red yeah. I am ready to speak out and refuse to be silent about the change that we need. Yes, yes. That's right. Right. Yeah. I'm joining tens of thousands of people for 40 days of nonviolent direct action as part of a new Poor People's Campaign. And we are taking our demand for a moral revival to politicians yeah. at the Capitol here in Montpelier right. and in 40 states across the country. That's right. 
right. Yeah. Because the next six weeks are just the beginning. That's yeah. right. That's right. This is the start of a multi-year movement. And we won't stop until we end America's war on the poor. All right. Yeah. said, poverty is violence. That's right. Poverty That's is right. violence. That's what it is. Poverty is immoral, but poverty is violence. That's right. Visited on the poor day in, day out, minute by minute. Mrs. King knew what violence was just a few short weeks before yes. she said that. Her husband had been gunned Sorry. down in Memphis, Tennessee for standing up for the poor. Sorry. In 1968, Dr. King said, there are three evils that confront us. Poverty, racism, and militarism. That's right. We know today, ecological destruction is also one of those evils. That's right. That's what this campaign is going to address. One of the things we know is that uh, we heard from the, uh, some of our fellow brothers and sisters out in the poor community of Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. One lady said, I can go down to the gas station. I can buy a gallon of unleaded gas. Uh -huh. Go out to the hardware store, buy a gallon of unleaded paint. That's right. When I turn my tap on, I can't get unleaded water. That's right. That is wrong. That is immoral. That's and we're going to change that. Our next speaker is Deacon uh, Beth Ann Mayer. She's also worked not only as a deacon in the church, but also as a pediatrician. She knows the health effects of a bad environment, but especially the health effects of poverty on children. Give it up for Beth Ann Mayer. Got to get my sign out here. Get your sign because on. poverty is violence. That's right. Yeah. Poverty is violence. We know that by science. For those of you who still believe in science, <laughs> that the effects of poverty on children is violence to their brains. We know that the effects of racism on children as they grow, the daily onslaught of all the small messages they get and sometimes large messages they get is violence to their brains and it puts them in very precarious health as they grow. Now, I belong to a church in which I'm ordained as a deacon, and a deacon's job is to model servanthood. And my God says to me, very directly, asks me, do you love me? And when I say yes, my God says to me, tend my lambs. And I'm here today to tend my lambs. In Vermont, we have 40% of our workforce is working for less than $15 an hour. That's right. That's right. That's wrong. That right. is a near poverty wage. When children grow up in those households, they're living in an environment of incredible stress. Right. And that stress leads to many ills. It leads to violence. It leads to substance use. Yes. It leads to disengagement. And all of those things are not good for our children. Children. So I'm here today to make a noise, to raise it up. This is not business as usual. We cannot go on the way we have gone on. No. We have to step out of the box and realize that our future really depends on taking care of our children right. in a very real way. So I'm asking the governor not to veto the bills for family leave. That's right. And the bill right. to raise the wage to 15. I'm thanking the legislature for having the courage to put those bills on his desk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope the governor is listening. And I hope the rest of the state is listening. It's our children that we're here for. Thank you. Thank you, Did you know there are 140 million poor people 
in the United States of America. Richest country in the history of the world. How many, did you know there are 140 million? Hard to put your mind around that. Did you know in Vermont, there are 87,000 working Vermonters who make less than $15 an hour. Did you know? That's right, did you know? That's why the governor has to sign the raise the wage bill. Did you know? There are 43,000 children here in Vermont whose caretaker makes less than $15 an hour. Did you know? That's immoral because poverty is immoral. Poverty is violence. We come here, we come here, especially today, holding in our hearts all the women, all the children, all the disabled people whose lives are crushed by poverty, by poverty wages, whose lives are shortened to environmental hazards whose lives can't be what they can be because they spend so much money on the damn war economy, whose lives are often threatened through systemic racism. So I want to introduce our next speaker, Rabbi Shana Margolin. She's speaking for uh, the Vermont Interfaith Action Clergy Caucus. So give it up for my great friend, Rabbi Shana. I speak as a rabbi, but I also speak as a disabled person, as you see. And let me tell you, it is expensive to be disabled. Right now, I can afford it. There are too many people who cannot. There's a story dear to Jews and Christians and Muslims that illustrates a universal truth. It's about the pharaoh in Egypt who was afraid of a foreign people who were within his realm. He forgot the contributions that they had made, the contributions that actually saved his country. He only saw that they were becoming very numerous and they were becoming very powerful, and he became afraid. And so he imposed harsh measures, work requirements, slavery. He took the fear of the other and became horrible to those people. Fear makes us mean. That's right. All of us become mean when we are afraid. And there is a lot of fear right now being expressed in our public sphere. But we are asked not to respond to fear. We are asked to operate out of love. All right. We are asked to love our neighbor yeah. as ourselves. Yes. yes. We are taught over and over in all of our traditions, over and over, to care for the people who need our help, to care for the, the disadvantaged, to care for the orphan and the widow right. and the stranger. That's what it says. We are asked to care for the children. All right. We are asked to welcome the stranger and make sure that she or he has what they need. We are asked to leave the corners of our fields unharvested yep. because right. even though we planted and we sowed and we worked to make that crop come, even though we work at our jobs to make our income, it doesn't all belong to us. Right. It belongs to everyone. And it is the burden of society to make things equal, to remember that every person, every single person is created in the divine image, that every single person deserves dignity, that every single person deserves respect and care. What mean you that you grind the face of the poor, says the prophet. Mm -hmm. What do we do? What are we supposed to do? And the prophet Micah tells us, you have heard what you must do. Do justly, 
do justice. Make your society a fair one. Yes. yes. Keep working for the dignity of every single person. Yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Love mercy. Love mercy. Love mercy. Be mercy. kind. Yes. Don't forget that everyone that you meet is balancing on the narrow bridge of life. That's right. And walk humbly. Walk humbly. Walk, hum walk humbly. Hum Remember that there is wisdom in everyone. Yes. Remember that we are all connected. Remember that we are all one. Let us go together for this 40 days and for the rest of our lives to remember, to serve, to know, to help, to create a moral society. That's right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Give it up for Rabbi Shana. Shana. Okay, Roger. Forward together. Not one step back. 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 But walk humbly. Walk humbly, right, Rabbi? Right. Right. So we gather here, like uh, Rabbi uh, Shana said. We gather here on this second day of 40 days of action. We're going to come back next Monday for another Monday rally. If you're interested in uh, participating with this, please see one of our peacekeepers. Please see me after the rally, because we want to make this movement continue to build here in Vermont and across the country. We're coming together again on Tuesday, the 29th. That's going to be our Truthful Tuesday. This is our Moral Monday. We're going to be back on June 4th, June 11th, June 18th. And then our sisters and brothers are going to join together from Vermont, Connecticut, Wisconsin, Kansas, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, going to Washington, D.C. for June 23rd. That's where this Poor People's Campaign, a national call for a moral revival, is going to go. That's right. As we come here, though, we don't maybe have the biggest crowd of all of the state house crowds in the 37 other states. We're a small little state, right? But we got the prettiest rally of all the 37 states. And it's beautiful. We have wonderful art that's been put together here. When we say uh, that we're uh, out, uh, out here for the Poor People's Campaign, it's not just for survival, it's to live. And if you want to live, you got to have art. You got to have music. You got to have dancing. And so I want to invite up Lindsay Love, who's been responsible for making a lot of this art happen. Give it up for Lindsay Love and this beautiful banner of elevation. Thank you. Um, so, first, I'd like for us to all just take a moment to think about all of the protesters in Palestine, in occupied Palestine, yeah. who right. have been murdered by the Israeli government for doing nonviolent protests, just like we are doing here today. So let's just take a moment. Thank you. So I'm Lindsay Love. And uh, I'm with the MAKE, um, which is a direct action arts collective. And we have been coordinating all the art for the Poor People's Campaign. All right! <laughs> um, and I'm here to say that we aren't just here to survive. We're here to thrive. Right. And one of the ways we do that, or two of the ways we do that, is through art and also through community. And pulling those two things together can be very powerful. Politics often lives in the realm of the logical and analytical, while art often lives in the emotional and creative space. This portrait of Ella Baker is a, a direct response to combining those two realms. How many of you know who Ella Baker was? <laughs> Ella Baker was the long-term lead strategist for the civil rights movement. And when you ask people about the civil rights movement, you often hear about a few strong other leaders, right? Ella Baker said, we don't need strong leaders. 
She said she believed in participatory, participatory democracy as a key component to real and meaningful change. That means every single person who's here and everyone who's not being involved. Whether you are making art, making food, or making revolution, keep doing it. It takes everyone to leave. We honor Ella Baker and her legacy of participatory democracy and the leadership of all brilliant women of color. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Give it up for Lindsay and all the Make Collective, all the beautiful art that we're surrounded by. Like I said, we're not the biggest rally, but we're the prettiest rally in all this country today. Why are we here? We are here because we're joining in fusion movement solidarity, moral solidarity, moral fusion with the 37 other states at the state capitol. Our, the Reverend Dr. William Barber from North Carolina started the Moral Mondays movement a few years ago. 16 people and Reverend Barber went to the Raleigh uh, State House in North Carolina and said, we're not going to take it anymore. Right? They sat down and got arrested, making sure that we had to have a moral, new moral narrative for North Carolina. Now, along with the Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, we're taking this all throughout the country. We gather here today, especially keeping in our hearts and in our minds, in our souls, the children, the women, the disabled. Now, I don't know about you, but I think the people who love children best are our teachers. I know the mothers and fathers love them, because we got to. <laughs> but the teachers, they have to go in. They go in day after day yeah, for okay. our children. Our teachers have been leading the way. We've yes. seen them get out in state houses in Charleston, West Virginia, Frankfort, Kentucky, out in Oklahoma, Phoenix, Arizona. Yes. Teachers have been yes. gathering in their state capitals. Now, we're gathering in 37 state capitals, learning from the teachers. That's right, that's what we gotta do. Learning from the teachers. We come to the state capitol because that, as Reverend Barber says, this is where the damage gets done. That's right. This is that's where right. the damage gets done. But we also know the pain is being felt in Middlebury, and Rutland, and Barry, and St. Johnsbury, all throughout this state. That's right. On June 16th, we're gonna go up to St. Johnsbury. And in St. Johnsbury, we're gonna have a Medicaid march because that's where the pain gets done from the damage that gets felt from the pain that gets done right here in Montpelier. Right here. So what we're doing is this moral fusion action. In a few minutes, we're gonna get ready because we're gonna go to the streets. Who's streets? Our streets! Who's streets? Our moral witnesses who are going to go down and take this street. And then in subsequent weeks as we come back, whose house? Oh. Our house. Whose house? Oh. Whose house? Oh. We're going to come here and take back our house too. Right so start getting prepared to think about moving down to the streets with us. So right now we're going to have music. Some of the music is the most important thing like Lindsay was talking about. It's just art this culture, this music that gives our souls life. We're about life because we know poverty is immoral, systemic racism is immoral, the war economy is immoral, immoral. and ecological devastation is immoral. So now let's have a little music to lift up our spirits. The solidarity singer is going to come up. Somebody start my sister. Okay, this is a good song. <laughs> if you know this song, sing along. And if you don't know this song, sing along. Hey. Yeah. Oh, somebody's heard my sister.
Lost my place. <laughs> right here. Did you, that's right. We're in, a, we're in the right place with the right people, our sisters and brothers. This is about the power. The power that we have. The power of the poor. The power of the people. The power of a campaign. We come together as the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for a moral revival in our 40 days of moral direction action as we gather here do you know did you know there are 1,200 homeless people here in Vermont it's cold here in the winter 1,200 too many homeless people in Vermont did you know 68% of single parent families find it impossible to make ends meet by the end of the month here in Vermont. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know somebody's been hurting my sister? And it's been going on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's been hurting my brother. It's been going on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. And we're not going to be silent. We're taking the street. We're taking the state house later. We're coming out here with that soul force we have. Nonviolent, moral fusion, direct action. All of us together. Now, my sisters and brothers, it is my great pleasure to introduce the tri-chair of the Pure People's Campaign of Vermont, Mark Hughes, the executive director of Justice for All. Give it up for Mark! Forward together. Forward together. Forward together. Forward together. Forward together. Give it up. <clears throat> now listen. First, let's get this straight, okay? This is not a celebration. No. Okay? This is not a commemoration. That's right. That's right. right. What we're doing here is a continuation. Yeah. That's right. And this is this is not meant to make you feel good today. We didn't come here to give you a whole lot of good news if you've been listening to the numbers. Okay? We have a lot of empirical data and we have a lot of anecdotal data and we put those things together they do not leave a good message for us as a nation or a state. So what we're here to do is, is to change a moral narrative of a nation today, starting in our hearts, expanding to our families and friends and across this state that we would impact a nation. How many people believe that? So what, what we came, but I stopped by to tell you is, is just to piggyback on my brother Earl's message about, about this whole idea of, of freedom, okay? And, and some of this involves moral courage. There, there are many people here who have far too much to lose. Okay. Oh, you didn't come to hear this. But there are many people here who have far too much to lose, and it makes your decisions very difficult. But there are some of us who have nothing to lose but our chains. There are some of us who come prepared to put our bodies on the line today. Okay? There are some of us who will continue to come and place our bodies on the line every day. There are some of us who get up every morning and place our bodies on the line. So what I came to tell you today is, is we have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose but our chains. And that is where our freedom comes from. And let me tell you, when we put that together, and as we begin to link arms, and as we begin to come together and share in our truths, as we begin to hold each other close together, what happens is, is that strength, that, that, that power becomes freedom. What happens is, is our collective courage, okay, our collective ability to risk everything because we've got nothing to lose but our change nullifies everything that would stand against us. Yeah. 
Oh, I wish I had a witness today. So what I'm trying to get at here is, is that, yeah, there are some of you who've come today and I know that it may have been for a show and that's okay and I hope it turns into something else. This is not a, a splash in the pan, let me tell you something. There are 37, maybe 40 other states across the United States, I know you've heard this, but there are, within, also within our own United States Capitol, what you're experiencing right now, you may look around right now and say, well, we're small in number, but I'm gonna, I came to tell you that we have already far exceeded anything that's ever been done in this nation right now. Oh yeah. So 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 what I came by to let you know is is just a couple of things is is that there is a nation that is crying right now. There are people even amongst us right now, to include myself, we are crying right now. We are dying right now. It is a shame when you can take over $600 billion, $650 billion and invest it in a so-called military or defense or something like that, and you got folks sitting around trying to figure out who gets health care? It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's immoral. Say it, it's immoral. It's immoral. It's a shame to live to be in a state where one in 14 African-American males like me, like you, are arrested and incarcerated, held in this state. It is a shame. I said it's a shame. And you know what? We lead the nation. There is no other state in this nation that incarcerates more African-American males than this state, one in 14. A shame. It's a shame when we have a military industrial complex that creates weapons and surveillance systems, takes them around the world, uses them on black and brown and poor people around the world, and then trickles it down into our own nation across our National Guard and local and state police forces to flood over into our own prison industrial complex to use again on black and brown and poor people to incarcerate and to enslave and to survey them. It is a shame. We can do better. You should say that. We can do better. We can do better. So this campaign, this when we start talking about the moral fusion, and I'm almost done, when we start talking about the moral fusion of this campaign, I want you to realize what it is that we're talking about. Because the same fight, when we start talking about the fight for clean water. We can't. We don't even have clean water for everybody in our own state, do we? No. no. The same fight for environmental justice. The same fight for our LGBTQIA community, right? The same fight for racial justice, right? The same fight for fair pay, for equal pay. The same fight for livable wages, the same fight for affordable housing, the same fight for every single one of these causes are undergird undergirded with one fact, is, is we have an immoral system that is passing immoral policies that is oppressing people by design and creating poverty for this nation. It ain't no accident. That's right. That's right. That's right. Say that, it ain't no accident. It ain't no accident. It ain't no accident. This is the first of many events that we have prepared. This is not a show. For those who came for a show, the theater is a block that way, okay? And we didn't come to play, because, and we didn't come to have a good time. There are people that are hurting folks, okay? There are some people who have nothing to lose but their chains today. Okay? And the, the rest of us, that doesn't exempt us though. Because you still, you, even if you have more to lose, you have a moral responsibility. You have a moral responsibility and because you have something to lose, then you have something to offer and you have something to sacrifice. So I came to say to you today, lay it down. That's right. Say it, lay it down. You put your money, oops, on the line. You lay it down, okay? That's what we came here for, and that's what we're here to do today. 
What you're going to see throughout the week is, is there will be a number of activities that are going on, leading right back up to where you stand today. You should go to the Facebook, way, uh, Facebook page of uh, the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for a moral revival for Vermont, and find out what those events are. You should go to the website and you should find out what those events are. And you should strongly consider plugging yourself in. And if you don't, if you feel like you're, you're not in a point to where you don't have anything to lose today, then I'll see you tomorrow. But we'll be right here. Thank you. If we can have it, shut it down. You ready? Yeah. If we, we can, can have, have it, it, shut it down. If we can have 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 it, shut it down. All right, give it up for Roger. Yeah. We're going to have a little more music because we need that music to really inspire us, lift us up as we start to move into action. In a few minutes, that's where we're going. During the singing, I'd like all of our moral witnesses to please come forward up here behind the uh, podium. All of the moral witnesses, please join me up here behind the podium. So Avery and uh, the Solidarity Singers are gonna give us a little more music to inspire us for a minute. All right, moral witnesses, moral witnesses. So this is a song that's really about commitment and is about when your mind is made up and what you're going to do once your mind is made up. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. Gonna hold my head up. Walking on in love. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. Gonna hold my head up, walking on in love. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. Gonna hold my head up, walking on in love. Well, I'm on my way. here. These are people who are prepared to risk arrest if that's necessary, but we express our First Amendment rights that poverty is immoral. immoral. Poverty is immoral. That systemic racism is immoral. That ecological destruction is immoral. That the war economy is immoral. They're making this statement not only with their minds, 
not only with their mouths, but with their bodies as well. We're gonna let them go down. We're gonna join. We want people to go cross the street safely. Cross the street safely. A uh, few people, or uh, some people gather up over on the uh, south side of State Street from the DMV. Some of us will stay here on the north side, on the capital side of State Street. And then our moral witnesses are gonna take the crosswalk. So, yes! are we ready to move? Yes! We're going to start chanting. Everybody. What'd you sign this way? Everybody.